Hello students, in this video we'll compute the Fourier transform of Bessel functions. Let's recall something before we begin our discussion of Fourier transforms of Bessel functions. It's going to be this Bessel formula. And to do that, we're going to use this recursion relationship. The integral of sine of nx dx can be written in terms of itself. Namely, this is the integral of sine to the n minus 1 of x times sine of x dx. If I let that be my dv and this be my u, this becomes negative cosine of x sine to the n minus 1 of x plus the integral. And then I'll have a, so it's going to be minus the integral, but I have a negative cosine, so it's going to be a plus cosine, and then n minus 1 cosine, so I'm going to have two cosines, an n minus 1, a cosine squared of x, and then a sine to the n minus 2 of x, n minus 2 of x dx, right? And so now the idea, of course, is that this is really 1 minus sine squared, 1 minus sine squared of x, like that. And I've self-replicated the formula now, right? So what we have over here is if I throw the n minus 1 on the other side of the equation, what will we get? So we're going to have the following. So we'll get um, the n times the integral of sine nx dx is going to be negative, negative cosine of x sine n minus 1 of x, and then plus the n minus 1, n minus 1, and then the sine of n minus 2, integral of sine of n minus 2 x dx. And so now in particular what we can do is I can plug in boundary limits to these things, and so what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually integrate this from 0 to 2 pi, and then divide by 1 over 2 pi everywhere. 1 over 2 pi. I'll put a 0 to 2 pi over here, and a 0 to 2 pi over here, like that. And let's see what happens when we do this over here. Well, I'm going to get just a pure, um, I'll take that n and put it on the other side of the equation. Both of these limits are going to vanish because I have the sine of n minus 1, at 2 pi and 0 are both going to be 0, right? So these boundary terms are going to vanish if we make these limits. And so we can conclude the following. We can conclude that 1 over 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine of nx dx is equal to n minus 1, n minus 1 over n, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine n minus 2 of x dx. And now for even powers of sine, I can build a crank for this. And so if I look at the even powers of sine, I can conclude that 1 over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the sine of 2n x dx is going to be what? Is going to be 2n minus 1 over 2n, and then times 2n minus 3 over 2n minus 2, all the way down to these ones are the odds, so they're going to terminate at 1, and these ones are the even, they terminate at the evens over here, right? So now I can do a little bit of algebraic manipulations of this over here. I'm going to say that this is equal to, well, this is all the odds factorial. If I put a 2n factorial up top over here, I've added in an extra n factorial 2n times, right? So this is going to be a 2 to the 2n for these in the bottom, and an n factorial squared over here. So I've just found a formula for 1 over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine of nx dx in the case when n is even, right? And so now we're going to use this to derive the Bessel, Bessel formula, okay? And so now we're going to consider, consider, consider 1 over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the i x sine theta d theta, like so. I'm going to consider this integral over here. And so if I consider this integral, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to tailor expand this and notice that all the odd powers of sine are going to vanish when I integrate them between 0 and 2 pi. So when I tailor expand this exponential, I'm only going to get the even powers because the odd powers are going to vanish. And so this is going to be 1 over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity. I'm going to have an i n x to the 2 n, so that's a negative 1 to the n, an x to the 2 n over 2 n factorial sine 2 n theta d theta like that. Beautiful. And so now I can interchange the summation and the integration, and so I'm going to get the following infinite sum over here. I'm going to have the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity. I'll have a negative 1 to the n. I'll have a what? This is going to be a what? So now I'm just going to plug in this expression over here. So the 2n factorials are going to cancel, and I'm just going to have a over n factorial squared times x over 2 to the uh, x over 2, x over 2, x over 2, to the power 2n, like that. 
okay? All right, just put this two in the denominator and group it with that x. And now we see that exactly that's just j0, right? So this is just j0 of x. This is j0 of x. So we have this formula for j0 of x. Let's just rewrite it over here. So j0 of x is 1 over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the i x sine theta d theta, right? I can also shift this between negative pi and pi if I want because of the periodicity. This is also equal to this formula over here e to the i x sine of theta d theta like that and by the periodicity and then by the fact that this by the fact that Euler's formula says this is cosine of x sine theta and plus i sine x sine theta and the i x sine sine of i x sine theta is an odd function that will vanish and I can use the fact that it's even to write this in the following way this is also one over pi the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two e to the i x sine theta d theta over there, right? So all of these formulas are valid representations, integral representations for the Bessel function of order zero, okay? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this equation over here and I'm gonna modify this. So what I'm gonna do is in that equation, I'm going to let t be the sine of theta. Then dt is going to be the cosine of theta, d theta, which we know we can relate the cosine of theta to t, that's just the square root of one minus t squared d theta, right? And so now what I can do is, of course, and what are the limits going to change into? So this is going to tell me that under the substitution, j0 of x is going to be 1 over pi, the integral. When theta is equal to negative pi over 2, t is equal to negative 1. When theta is equal to positive pi over 2, the t is equal to 1. And then I have e to the i x t, e to the i x t. And then I have a d theta, but d theta is really dt over the square root over here, right? 1 minus t squared dt. And now I'm almost done, because what I'd like to do is I'd really like to put a 2 in the denominator over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 2 in this denominator over here, and a 2 in the numerator over here, like that. And then, of course, this is really what? This is really the Fourier, this is the inverse Fourier transform. So this is the inverse Fourier transform of the characteristic function from negative 1 to 1 of t, times 2 over the square root of 1 minus t squared inverse Fourier transform of x, right? And so that tells me if I Fourier transform this, I will be able to undo the check marks. So in other words, this inner representation writes j0 as the inverse Fourier transform of this function over here. The inverse Fourier transform is represented by check. So check here is the inverse Fourier transform, right? By Fourier inversion. And now I can conclude my result for the Bessel function. I can conclude that j0 hat the Fourier transform of the Bessel function is exactly what? Is exactly be the characteristic function. And sometimes people will say it's like the rectangular function, but this just means it's equal to one between negative one and one and zero everywhere else. So it's just that rectangular pulse function over there of xc and then times two over the square root of one minus xc squared. So this is a beautiful formula because what we're gonna do is variants of this formula are gonna be extremely useful for us when we're solving PDEs that arise in physics like the Klein-Gordon particular model in particle dynamics. The Klein-Gordon model in particle dynamics, the solution to that with given initial data and given initial velocity for particle fields is written in terms of these Bessel functions in terms of a slight modification of this where I have to take, sort of look at the square roots of the interior of these, uh, these things. But this is the basic feature, this basic formula for Fourier transforms of Bessel functions of order zero is going to be used to leverage other more complicated formulas to solve more complicated PDEs in sort of one spatial variable by Fourier transform techniques. Thank you very much.